Hello, my name is Michael. I'm trained as an architect and lighting designer. And um, my interest in lighting really developed while studying architecture. And I was looking more and more into, into daylighting, natural lighting. And so when I heard about the um, Master of Architectural Lighting program, I was quite excited and uh, enrolled right away. My first job was actually with Lichtvision in Berlin. Um, I started there as an intern and since then I moved through uh, basically various positions and also eventually moved to Hong Kong uh, to be a design director here in the office. So my, my first job here really allowed me to apply right away what I had learned um, during studies uh, working on a, on a daylight concept for a museum and um, I think I was quite lucky to, to have the chance and work on that. About my, about my work here in, in Hong Kong is um, when working on a project I always focus um, to develop a, a design language that is both design-wise but also in terms of communication among the, the wider project team and with the client. Um, and I really enjoy projects which are having a little bit more of a complex setup. So, for example, um, an airport or a museum, you have to both fulfill um, a design uh, concept or to develop a design concept and fulfill various expectations. You have um, various groups of people that are moving through the space and they all come from different places. They have different age or different backgrounds. At the same time, you have a very... A tight technical framework and functional uh, requirements that you need to fulfill, but somehow bringing all of this together is, is something I quite enjoy. Um, and it also, moving to Asia um, has taught me a lot about uh, culture and the importance of culture, both uh, for the design of a project, but also how a, a project team works and, and, and functions. And I think that was... Uh, has developed into a very important part of my work because it's actually for every single country within Asia you have to understand the, the local culture and what's important and how people perceive light and, and what matters to them or what they might be afraid, even afraid of um, or, or just not prefer. So all these little bits and pieces which go beyond doing a, technically doing a lighting design you have to put all of that into the concept and you need to ideally understand that from the beginning, even though obviously you're allowed to learn in the process, but you need to find, you need to distill a certain piece of that and, and implement it into the design and the language that you're going to apply. Until recently, I think the most challenging project for me was to, to set up and establish the local office here in Hong Kong. Um, but looking back, I think I had such a great team and I had lots of trust. Both from uh, project partners and clients. Um, so that certainly helped to, yeah, to establish the office here. Um, so I'd say, yeah, that was my biggest or maybe longest project. I think one thing that still applies, you really got to understand um, the basics and you really need to know your stuff that doesn't change no matter what light source or technology you're using. At the same time you need to be open to work with different people and different disciplines. Um, that, that group of people involved in lighting design is changing and you should both have an understanding for what they're doing but also a mutual respect because they know their things just like you know about lighting. And if you really work together as a team, I think you can achieve great concepts and great designs eventually. For me, I think it would be um, a natural lighting design topic, um, looking into both the design process and how culture influences this process. Um, again, I've, I've learned so much about different habits here and different uh, perceptions of lighting. And I think this is something um, you can you can draw a lot of inspiration from that and a lot of understanding for a project. Um, but then to be able and implement that into the process, I think um, that would be something I'd focus on. I'm not sure if I could name one specific person. Um, I actually draw a lot of um, inspiration or a lot of, a lot of influence in my work comes from architecture, whether that is a contemporary one or historic or somewhere in between. Um, I, I also think um, that is 
the, the confidence of a team and a client that they have in you when they get you on a project and, and really trust you with doing that is something that I find uh, quite influential. Um, I have to say that over the last years, um, and when moving to Hong Kong, the, the, the attitude of people here would have been very influential because it was, it was quite a task and quite a challenge. But people here have been very um, welcoming and open-minded and they all have an understanding for how it is when you arrive here. You don't know too many people. But those who I knew, they really, um, they really welcomed me very warm and introduced me to everyone. And I think that just helped to, to get a foot in the door and, and arrive. I think I'd say often it's, it's a fraction of a second uh, where, where light reveals a pattern or um, a material and it just tells you a lot about the space that you're in. And um, for me, light fascinates me because it's, it's invisible by itself but it's so powerful once it interacts with a surface or a space. And I think for me, everything can be inspiring, but it, it's just that moment again, when you, when you see something um, that does a job. Personally, my um, impression is that they're not that underrepresented when it comes to practice heads. Um, that I've just seen many uh, women who, who have their own offices. Um, but I do notice it when I look at professional conferences and, and also in, in publications. Um, it might be an, a matter of self-confidence and, and we just have to, we just have to learn uh, to, you have to say what you think and what you want to say. And um, yeah, you might get some criticism or you might get people who don't agree, but that's, that's part of the of the package and, and that's okay because you will get again new input from that and um, another approach would be to maybe not only look at the big events but actually look a bit around you and think outside the box is there other events that uh, where that might be applicable what you have to say is there people from other disciplines or completely different businesses who might be interested in lighting and uh, I think that could be very beneficial in developing also your own understanding and um, again refine what it is that you want to say. That will be three points I guess. Um, one is, it applies to me, it's achieve a balance of, of listening and communicating but then also focus on your work and um, don't let difficult situations take away your energy or distract you. Um, they might be frustrating, there's difficulties, that's, that's normal, but um, again, don't let them take your energy, but instead use this energy to involve and enjoy what you're doing. And um, lastly, I think you should appreciate those who have helped you along the way, and even if it's a couple of years later, sometimes it might occur to you that this and that person or this situation actually helped you in, in defining what you're doing now. And, well, in that case, maybe just send them a short message and say hello and say thank you.